Rogers Corporation presents Ensuring Reliable Automotive Radar Antenna Performance. Here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, my name is John Coonrod and I am a Technical Marketing Manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking to you about ensuring reliable automotive radar antenna performance. And there's six different topics that I'm going to be talking about that are critical for understanding printed circuit board technology as well as high frequency circuit materials when used at 77 gigahertz. Now a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today will also relate to the lower frequency such as 24 gigahertz, but I'm really going to have more emphasis on the more difficult 77 gigahertz which has, low, which has basically a shorter wavelength and a little more sensitive to different properties. So to begin with, I'm going to talk about these six properties in regards to reliability and also RF consistency. Now the RF consistency really is uh, related to how consistent the circuit performs from one circuit to another. So when the circuit is built in high volume manufacturing, there is obviously circuit to circuit differences or batch to batch or lot to lot differences of RF performance. And that's really what I'm addressing here today. Shown here is a list of six different topics which are very important to understand for any application at 77 gigahertz for radar sensors. And to begin with, the copper surface roughness, uh, that's a pretty big topic and I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But basically, a smoother copper is going to be better for having less losses and more consistent phase response. Dissipation factor, having low dissipation factor is obvious that it would be a good thing to have. However, there has been some talk in the industry that thinner circuits that are used at millimeter wave, uh, really the emphasis is more on conductor effects because the conductor effects really dominate a thinner circuit. However, I have seen with some competitive materials where the dissipation factor changes pretty dramatically, especially when you get up in the millimeter wave range of frequencies. And in that case, the dissipation factor really does come into play and it can actually override some of the benefits of even smooth copper. Moisture absorption, I'm going to talk about this more as we go along as well, but essentially uh, water or water vapor or moisture being absorbed into the circuit is a bad thing, increases losses, alters the decay of the circuit itself. Dielectric constant tolerance, that's probably something pretty obvious. You want to have a pretty tightly controlled material for dielectric constant tolerance. Rule of thumb there is a dielectric constant of plus or minus 0.05 or better is considered good. And then temperature coefficient of dielectric constant, sometimes called thermal coefficient of dielectric constant, TCDK. That's a property that all materials have, and it's basically how much the DK will change with a change in temperature. And rule of thumb there is the material should have a TCDK of 50 parts per million per degree C or less. And then woven glass reinforcement, I'm going to talk about that as well in more detail. But basically, some of these woven glass uh, materials that are used to reinforce the laminate can affect the laser vias, which are pretty commonly used now in millimeter wave applications. And also, you can have a glass weave effect, which is an electrical consistency issue. Copper surface roughness can have a pretty dramatic effect on insertion loss as well as phase response for that matter. We've done several studies on this topic and uh, one of the th things that we've noticed is on a thin circuit, of course, the uh, conductor effects are more dominant and the material that's used most, uh, the most in the industry right now for 77 gigahertz automotive radars is 5 mil RO3003 laminate. And this laminate does come with two different types of copper. The, uh, the type of RO3003 that's used right now at 77 gigahertz uh, is really used in ED copper, which is a little cheaper, but it is a rougher copper and it can cause a little bit more insertion loss. But considering the material is such a low loss material, even at 77 gigahertz, you still have very good loss performance. Now, if you want to go above and beyond that and really get a little better performance, you could also use rolled copper, which is very smooth, and that will most certainly impact the uh, RF performance where you have less insertion loss and also more consistent phase response. Shown here is an insertion loss curve where we have insertion loss on the y-axis in dB per inch and the x-axis is frequency going out to about 90 or 95 gigahertz. And you can see there's two different curves that are pretty distinctly different. The blue curve is actually the 5 mil RO3003 using ED copper and that's actually what's used most commonly at 77 gigahertz right now for automotive radar sensors. And at 77 gigahertz it has a loss of about 2.2 or so dB per inch which is considered really good. However, you can see the gray curve is the exact same material but using a much smoother copper, rolled copper, and at 77 gigahertz we typically see an insertion loss value of about 0.9 dB per inch and that's extremely good. So you can see the difference of uh, insertion loss and how the effects of copper surface roughness impacts that. Moisture absorption can play a very significant role on RF consistency. Of course, these automotive sensors can be exposed to a lot of different environments where the 
uh, moisture or the humidity in the air can affect the moisture that's absorbed into the circuit. And uh, moisture being absorbed in the circuit can impact the insertion loss and the phase response. So we've done a pretty thorough study on this. And uh, one of the studies I did, I'd like to share with you just a few excerpts. And one of them is insertion loss differences between circuits tested at room temperature and circuits tested after 85-85 testing. The 85-85 testing means 85 degrees C and 85% relative humidity. So what I did was tested the circuits at room temperature first, then I tested the exact same circuits after being conditioned three days at 85-85 and tested them again and then saw what the differences were. Now I also did that with not only the 5 mil RL3003 materials, but also some other materials. And one of these materials was a competitive material, which is a thermal set PPE material. And that does have higher moisture absorption. And you can see very readily that it makes quite a big difference, especially at millimeter wave frequencies. Shown here is a series of insertion loss curves. And on the y-axis, insertion loss is shown as dB per inch, x-axis frequency going from about 10 megahertz out to 80 gigahertz. And the testing I did here was actually the exact same set of circuits uh, except in different conditions. So the green curves are showing the circuits are built on 5 mil RL3003 laminate with ED copper. And the light green curve is the performance of the circuits when uh, tested at room temperature conditions. The dark green curve are the circuits when they were tested after 72 hours at 85-85 conditions. And the insertion loss difference at 70 gigahertz is 0.13 dB per inch difference, which really isn't much. Now, in the case of the thermal set PPE competitive material, that is the red curve and also the orange curve. And there we see a difference under the same conditions of 0.81 dB per inch difference, and that's a pretty significant difference. Now, the competitive PPE material, if you look on the data sheet, and we have tested it, it does claim a moisture absorption number of 0.3%, which is valid. And 0.3% doesn't sound like that much, but you can see here in the graph, it really does make a significant difference. Whereas the RO3003 materials, moisture absorption for that is 0.05%. As part of the study, I also did measurements on phase response, and the chart shown here is really showing dielectric constant versus frequency. And the dielectric constant is the dielectric constant extracted from phase measurements of these microstrip transmission lines. And you can see the same type of testing where I'm looking at room temperature conditions compared to 85-85 conditions for 72 hours. The difference in the dielectric constant at 70 gigahertz is 0 0.005 for the 5 mil RL3003 materials. And for the competitive PPE-based materials, there is a difference of 0 0.04. So that's about eight times difference. And again, the moisture absorption is really not as much as you might think for the competitive materials. 0.3% may not sound like much, but you can see it really does have a remarkable impact on the DK as extracted from the circuits. Now, I'll also say that the uh, antennas that are used at 77 gigahertz, they're very critical for the performance of the phase angle itself. And the phase angle itself is directly related to the DK. So when you see this much of a shift on DK performance, you have to assume there's a significant shift on the phase angle for the circuit. Most of the laminates used in the high frequency industry are woven glass reinforced, and that's pretty common. Uh, there are a few that are not, uh, but the woven glass reinforcement can cause issues with microvias, laser microvias, and other fabrication uh, issues for circuit fabrication. And that's one possible issue with woven glass. Another one is an electrical performance or electrical consistency, and that is called a glass weave effect. The glass weave effect is essentially where the performance of the circuit can be altered by the glass pattern itself. And that's typically not that big of an issue at lower frequencies or even thicker circuits. But on thinner circuits at millimeter wave frequencies, that can be very significant. Shown here is a top view of a glass weave that's very commonly used. This is a 1080 glass that is used to reinforce laminates for high frequency materials. And you can see there's uh, pretty remarkable differences here between the glass areas and the non-glass areas. So let me describe this to you briefly. So there's areas that I'm calling glass knuckles. And what that really is, is uh, that's areas where the glass bundles will overlap with other glass bundles. So there's double glass in that area, so to speak. And then away from that where the yellow arrows are pointing, that is just glass bundles only. And then away from that to the right, is where the green arrows are pointing, and that's where there is no glass at all. So because of this, there's actually very big differences in dielectric constant. The glass itself has a dielectric constant of about six. And of course, depending on how you measure and test that, it could be actually a little higher than that. For what we're talking about today, six is a good number though. And then we're gonna assume uh, there is a clear resin system here that we're looking straight through. And that clear resin system, normally it has a dielectric constant of about 2.5 to three. So we're gonna assume three today. So there's a difference between the glass and the areas of no glass of about three. So a difference of six DK versus three DK. 
Now that can be a real issue with millimeter wave frequencies that have very short wavelengths and very sensitive to decay differences. So if you can imagine a microstrip circuit being placed on top of this image where the signal conductor is near you and the ground plane is away or into the board, now the glass is in between obviously. If you could imagine a signal conductor going vertical right along the yellow arrow from bottom to top of the picture, it's basically that signal conductor is going to see different dielectric constant and it's going to see areas of glass and areas of no glass, areas of glass, no glass, and what you get is a zipper effect of dielectric constant being high decay, low decay, high decay, low decay, and at low frequencies with longer wavelengths, that really doesn't have much impact. But at high frequency millimeter wave, 77 gigahertz with very short wavelength, it really can pick up on these differences and cause consistency issues for RF performance. Now also imagine again, that signal conductor is shifted off to the left where the short blue arrow is uh, highlighted as glass knuckles. And as that signal conductor is going from bottom to the top of the screen, now it's actually going across the top of glass only. So it's areas of glass knuckles, glass bundles, glass knuckles, glass bundles. And now the decay difference is not as much, but it is remarkably higher than the other trace that we just talked about. So for one circuit where the glass bundles are aligned different to the signal trace and another circuit, that can actually make a pretty big difference in consistency of RF performance from one circuit to another. This concludes this video about auto radar antenna performance. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.